Greetings and welcome. My name is Tobel, and this is a quick peek at Northguard. Northguard is a real-time strategy game in the vein of the old Age of Empires 2 at all, and it's got a kind of a unique twist to it, so I'd like to show you all just a bit of a gameplay. I think I'm just going to do... Uh, we'll just do one playthrough right now. I just want to give you a, a sneak peek if you've not seen it. It's been out for a while, and I've had it for a while, and I've not really touched it until just recently... A friend of mine and I started playing more, and I'm like, this is kind of fun. <laughs> this is actually kind of nice. Uh, pretty challenging, too, and it's, it's not too long. So we're going to jump right in here. This is the Ragnarok DLC that I have. I'm not honestly sure how many DLCs are out here for the game. I've just uh, kind of started getting into it a bit more. So I'm going to do a large map, a medium. I don't know what Rag the Ragnarok setting is yet. I might mess with that on maybe a second playthrough. But for now, we'll keep it as a kind of a sneak peek. Uh, so when you're starting the game, you pick a clan. Now, this is all Norse-themed, so everything is uh, set in kind of the Norse mythology. So you'll see a lot of that referenced. I think I'm going to actually... Can I do random from here? I can't. Um, so each of these clans gives you certain bonuses. So you have certain starting bonuses, and then you have certain unique items or unique buildings. For example, uh, the Hyde Run, the Clan of the Goat, or probably Hyde Rune or something like that, uh, they have a, uh, they start with sheep and you can build a sheepfold, which gives you kind of passive food income as you put sheep into the sheepfold. So that's a pretty huge bonus for food. Um, the, uh, yeah, sure, this one that I'm not going to be able to, to pronounce, we'll call it the Slid. They are, oh, sorry, I'm actually thinking of Jarky. Uh, I think Jarki is Clan of the Bear. Jarki is starts with uh, Kaija, an armored bear, which is awesome for defense. So if you're very much in a turtle mentality, you can start out with this. Instead of getting, um, you know, extra food up front, you get a giant effing bear. So, hey, what could go wrong? I think, though, I'm going to start out with the Clan of the Stag, just because it's pretty food-focused, which is nice. Uh, you start out with, let's see... And we'll talk about some of what these things rec uh, mean later on. So fame, you'll see things like that, uh, lore as well. So let's just jump right in here. Now, there's a lot of types of victory, or there's different types of victories in this game. So there's a fame victory. You get a certain amount of fame and some other requirements. There is a lore victory, which is the uh, akin to a science victory. There's domination, so conquer all of your enemies. And there's also a trade victory, if I remember correctly. I probably, I guess it really depends on what we encounter, right? I mean, it's the same thing in Civ. You might go, you might go into it with a certain idea of what your victory is going to be, uh, but you really don't know until you start looking around. So we start with our little uh, town hall and four workers. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'll explain as we go, but I do want to get things started. I'm going to hit build, and I'm going to build a scout camp, and I'm going to build a woodcutter's camp near the trees here. So what are we looking at? This is, I guess, a region. I'm sure there's an actual official name to it, but you see this highlighted tile. This is my first starting region or zone or whatever you want to call it. Now, each of these zones is kind of like really big hexagon-ish uh, tiles you'll see. That's kind of what makes the map up. It's different shapes. It's not always kind of a hexagon or anything. It's, it's pretty uh, amorphous. So... You can only build a certain amount of buildings per tile. So if you see here, it says that we've got three buildings out of five. So that gives you an idea that you can, you know, you have to strategize where you're going to put down your buildings. So we built a woodcutter's lodge and a scout camp, but you see here that no one's working it, either of them. So I'm going to highlight one of my villagers and tell each of them to work at both of these camps, one each. So a scout... A scout will go to the edge of your unexplored territory and start looking into that zone. So it's going to basically unlock this zone once the timer completes. Now, scouts can also do other things like explore ruins, and they can fight, I think, in a pinch as well. Um, so they have some different uses, but I find myself mid to late game kind of forgetting about them for the most part. Uh, well, of course, the woodcutter is chopping down trees. So you're seeing here that we've got a passive amount of food, wood, and crowns, basically your money resource. We'll talk about some of these other resources here in just a bit. So we just unlocked this new tile. Now, I can't do anything here because it's got an enemy. So it's got a wolf here. We have to clear this out before we, we can actually colonize this tile. So to do that, I'm going to put down a training camp 
put a training camp in my current zone, and there you see another tile that just got unlocked, also with the wolf. So this tile is really awesome because it has fertile land. Uh, fertile land will let us build the farm or the fields here. So it's just a bit of a farmland. So you'll be able to build that, get some food. I also see some trees here, but that's about it. I'm not seeing too much more of interest in this particular area. This tile has some stone, so we'll be able to put down a mine to extract stone up here. All right, so while we've got a second, I want to talk about some of these resources. So you're seeing this thing here is called lore. We're getting two lore per turn. Lore is uh, basically your research, right? It's, it's letting you unlock certain trees and certain traits for your, your, uh, your tribe or your clan. And you can focus on certain ones. Now, here's a couple things, by the way, a couple caveats. I don't know all the fancy uh, victory methods and, and perfect ways to play the game. I don't even know what getting all of these symbols means. I, I, each clan has different um, researches or lore, uh, pieces of lore that they want you to pick up, it seems like. Now, I don't know what happens if you happen to get all these bonuses, but I'm going to try for it this time around. All right, so our scout's been busy. So what do we see here? We have... A tile, uh, now some of these tiles have kind of bonuses that are tile wide. So for example, this one has a uh, woods bonus. It's going to improve your wood production by 10%. So we're going to want to put down some wood, a woodcutter's uh, shop here. I believe you can only have one of the same building in each tile. All right, so they're grumpy because they need more housing. As you can see up here, we're six out of six. So let's go ahead and put down a house by the river. When you're putting down a uh, building, only a villager will be able to build it. So if you happen to have assigned everyone to the woodcutter profession, for example, you could select that, you know, anyone, anyone you have to spare, send them back to the house, either a house or a town hall, and they'll become a villager again, and they'll be able to build and repair buildings, all right? All right, so we are, uh, we're not too terrible off on resources. So here's a tile that didn't have any enemies on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the colonization process. Got a couple of sheepies you can see here. We'll talk about sheep in a bit. And you'll see that our border will instantly expand to cover this entire tile once the colonization is done. Now we can start building in this tile. So I'm going to build a field. I'm also going to drop down a mine. There we go. And we also have to assign someone to this tile to start working on these buildings. Now you can either assign a villager to the building itself, or just click them into the tile, and they'll start working on whatever buildings need to be built or repaired. I believe built. Maybe not repaired. I don't remember how... Repair, I normally have to tell them to do something. Alright, so an extra wolf spawned here, and it started to invade our territory. Luckily, we have a lot of people to spare, so they're all going to help punch it. You can also micromanage your people a bit to pull them away from the fight. Alright, so a couple things that I want to do. I want to... Oh, we're out of wood, pretty much. Let's assign someone else to the... Uh, uh, woodcutter job. Now, how you're getting people, you see that we finished this house, so now we have a bigger cap, right? We have 7 out of 11 total population. Your resources or your villagers will respawn based on your happiness. So the higher happiness you have, I think to a certain point you start to have diminishing returns. So I think having 2 or 3 happiness will pretty much max out your now this is not scripture i'm not I, i'm not 100 on this but i th i think having about three or four happiness two or three or four happiness should get you pretty close to the maximum of how quickly someone's going to join your clan so i want to make sure i keep that happiness up so as soon as it drops to one i'm probably going to put aim for a building that uh is called the oh it's the hall of skulls with this group interesting in other clans, it's just a it's just a tavern or a uh, a brewery, I believe. All right, so uh, one of our builders finished the the field, so I'm gonna grab a villager, assign you to the fields. Are you a villager? You are. I'll assign you to the fields too. You're the person who just built these two. I'm gonna assign you to the quarry. Now, the quarry is one of the few uh, buildings that'll actually run out of a resource, both for stones and for iron, which I don't see any on the map. You can actually see the symbols here on the mini-map. So you'll actually have a, a limit of, or, or a limited amount of that resource that you'll extract. And then it'll uh, kind of get a question mark and you'll say, oh, okay, go ahead and just destroy the building. Let's colonize this tile because I'd like to put down woods here, or the uh, woodcutter hut. 
An unknown clan has discovered a wyvern's den. Oh, lovely. It's right uh, near us, too. So these are unique map tiles to whatever... I, I should say, they're not really unique to every map. It'll be different on every playthrough. So this one has a, wy a wyvern. So if I kill it, I get 250 fame and 500 uh, military experience, which I can use to kind of unlock and, and increase my experience in a certain path. So I need to start thinking about what kind of a victory I want to aim for. And I believe since this Hall of Scalds increases my fame as well as happy, excuse me, a little hiccup there, uh, it increases my fame as well as happiness, I think I'm going to aim for a fame victory. So, to get a fame victory, we need to have 14 controlled areas, 1,200 fame, and an altar of kings, which is this building down here, which just needs a lot of resources. All right. I'm talking a lot and I'm not doing a lot of things, so let's start focusing on what we're up to. I maxed out on my buildings here in this tile. Let's go ahead and drop down a woodcutter's lodge next door. We'll just put it over here. Doesn't really matter if it kills a couple of trees. We're never going to really hit the limit. All right, you're a villager that's not doing much. Let's have you come over to this tile. Great. Do we have any spare things? No. Now, you'll start to see as I click on these buildings, all of them have an upgrade button down here. Upgrading normally gives you plus one population, and I think sometimes it gives you kind of a bonus. So you can hover over it and see what kind of a bonus you're getting. So for example, if we upgrade the Woodcutter's Lodge, we get one more Woodcutter, and all Woodcutters in this area gain a 20% production bonus to wood. So a Scout, for example, uh, you can increase your Scout's scouting speed by 50%, and they can scout into enemy territory, which you can't do by default. So it gives you an idea of what we are looking at. Uh, this person just finished. You'll see little icons here that tells you that they don't have anything going on, and you also see, will see these warnings here. So, clan member without a job. We can click on them, and boom. This clan member doesn't have a job. We'll assign them to the Woodcutter's Lodge. And actually, what I'm going to do is pull someone from this Woodcutter's Lodge over here. I'm going to make this Woodcutter into a villager, and I'm going to destroy the old Woodcutter's Lodge. Hey, I've not even talked about winter yet. So, this is a schedule of the year, and it tells you how long winter is going to be. And it normally does give you a heads up. In winter, you have a... Uh, decrease to your military power. You also lose a little bit of your food production and you have an increased amount of wood consumption for firewood. So just keep that in mind. You always want to know where winter is. And some of them can have special events and be more serious and uh, be pretty dangerous to your group. So the other building I want to look at for fame is a longship dock. Uh, longship dock, basically you've got a bunch of Viking raiders and they're out going a viking and trying to bring fame and glory or they're out to find hidden pieces of lore you can actually tell them to do one or the other so this is telling us here that we've unlocked a lore fragment or a lore whatever you want to call this you can see up behind the window that our villagers are getting attacked by a wolf but we've got three civilians that are going to probably be able to defend themselves so i particularly want to focus on the sharp axes this is kind of your, your production a little bit of your production. This is more money related. This is more uh, combat related. So I'm going to do this tree first. Well, it gives me a right away. It gives me a 20% boost to uh, to wood, which is great. Colonization reduces the amount of food necessary to colonize an area by 30%, which really comes in handy for a fame victory because we need 14 areas. So we're going to need a lot of food. All right, we are capped out on houses now. Do we have enough to upgrade the longhouse? We need a little bit more stone and in fact I'm gonna wait until I can get that stone piece which just happened before you can upgrade any other buildings you have to have your town hall upgraded first so that's why I did that I'm gonna send someone over to help this quarry person out uh, we also got our long ship dock finished so I'm gonna put two villagers to the long ship dock and I'm gonna click the raid button and choose for them to start raiding fight for fame all right, so they're going to go a Viking and start a raiding and start getting the fame. We have one more villager who's not doing much, right? Here's where you can actually see a full list of all your jobs and, and who's doing what. So we have two civilians that aren't, or villagers that aren't doing anything. We have a couple of people wounded too. Now, as you actually have people injured, your happiness might go down because of that. So you got to keep an eye and make sure that people are relatively healed up and um, in, in high health. And to do that, we could put down a healer's hut, but we need 60 wood to do that. So obviously it's the middle of the winter. We're a little bit low on our wood production. By the way, uh, 
there's no guarantee that I'm going to win this playthrough. I've played um, a couple of days now in a row, and it's been a while since I played before, and I think I've got a rough handle on it. I don't know the most optimized strategy for one thing or the other, but for the most part, by and large, I can at least make it a pretty close attempt at the end. If you want to see where you're at compared to your foes, you can press V for the victory conditions, and you kind of get an idea of where everyone's at in the victory race. So you've got Domination, Fame, Trade, and Wisdom through Lore. All right, so our uh, our ships are coming and giving us some fame, which is great. Once you start meeting clans, you also can start seeing uh, what their fame is compared to yours. Our scout was hurt a bit, and they will, they will randomly get hurt occasionally. I'm actually going to pull that scout back and make them into a villager for a minute. I want them to heal up. Alright, let's put down the Healer's Hut. Now, we're maxed out on buildings in our home tile. So let's go ahead and drop a Healer's Hut here. Now, we're not going to put a whole ton of things over in this tile. You also can see a Runestone here, which gives, uh, well, if we assign uh, someone to it, they will become a Lore Master. So let's go ahead and grab a Villager and assign them to the Runestone. Great. Uh, we're really low on food. Oh, they're actually, because they're fighting, they got pulled off the job. What else can we do for food? We're really low on food. We could hunt. We really need to get this tile for the next fertile land thing. So, let's go ahead and grab some spare villagers. You're wounded. I don't want to use you. Let's grab these two. I want to assign them... Oh, you know what? I don't like warriors, actually. Yeah, we'll, we'll grab warriors for the minute. There are four different kinds of fighters. There's warriors, skirmishers, axe throwers, and shield bearers. There's also a kind of an uber unit, like a war chief or a berserker that most groups have. Okay, so I've, uh, I basically right-clicked on the camp, and they two villagers became warriors for the low cost of, like, 25 gold or 25 uh, crowns. I can actually select them by pressing E. This will select my entire warband. So I'm going to click into the tile. Let them start beating up on this wolf. Uh, you can actually, minim or like I mentioned, uh, kind of min uh, micromanage your combat. So, for example, this person's wounded, right? If I'm watching this and I'm like, oh, you're getting wounded, I can click on them. Pull them away, and then the enemy will focus on the next target. So I've cleared out two tiles right next to each other, which is great. I also just happened to unlock the next lore technology, or whatever you want to call that. So I'm going to put that into colonization to reduce the cost of colonization. Boom. Starting colonization here, and you know what? We've got... Eh, we don't have a huge surplus. Let's be a little bit careful. And now you can see that we've got a negative one to our happiness there because we have too many people wounded. Luckily, we are building... Oh, I forgot to assign a worker over here, by the way. So let's grab our villager who's not doing anything, send them into this tile, and they'll start building up the healer's hut. Bueno. And then also, we've got enough wood. Let's go ahead and drop down a field over here. There's another villager, and I'm going to send him into this tile, and he'll start building this field. Or this field, and then we're going to build uh, the healer's hut. Down here, we have a shipwreck which can be explored by a scout, which is pretty cool. And we have more stone, so I'm going to start stockpiling stone early on because you need stone to upgrade almost every building in the game. I think every building. Uh, let's see, we are at our max population. Where do I want to start putting houses? I think I'm going to actually use this tile mostly for housing. Because some tiles you can actually just put them all in one area. Uh, you see these two people here, these two miners, are have nothing to do because they've actually completely strip this resource of all of its goods. So I'm going to destroy the building to reclaim some resources. I'm going to make both of them villagers again, temporarily. Uh, you see this is one of the events that can happen kind of randomly during the year. We have portals leading to Helheim, so some Draugr are going to appear somewhat relatively soon. Uh, here's someone without a job. We'll assign them to the Healer's Hut. Now the Healer's Hut will randomly start healing people. Now you can kind of micromanage it and tell them who to heal or they'll just heal I think from whatever calculation they use and they'll keep healing as they go and since people are grumpy about it do we have anyone to spare we have three villagers but we are low on food let's actually get some people uh, onto the farming job so we got two farmers there two farmers there now it's uh, it's beneficial to upgrade some of your basic buildings early on so for example I'm gonna upgrade this woodcutters lodge because wood is going to be a really important resource as we keep going. So that opened up one more slot for a person. We're going to dump this villager in. Off you go. Thank you so much, madam. Yoffred. 
All right, and I could colonize this. No, actually, wait, I thought we had more. Huh. We're really, really, really hurting for food. We're going to have to upgrade these fields pretty soon, as soon as we get maybe another villager. Uh, when your happiness is below one, or below zero, you will not get people to come to your city. They won't join your clan. So you really want to focus on keeping that happiness up as much as possible. What could I do here? We've got two buildings of food. Food can sometimes be a little sketchy. Like, I mean, like, we've got two fields here, which is great, but you can see it's not doing it for us. We're still consuming more than we're producing. The food silo will improve your uh, production by 10% by its default level. So we're going to go ahead and give a uh, food silo here next to one farm. I can't afford another one. I'm going to... I was thinking about putting one over here as well. Lots and lots of people injured. Cool. Uh, let's see. This is eradication. Food silos gain a 10% food production bonus, and you gain one happiness per silo. Well then, uh, that's going to be huge for us, and it has the stag mark, which I believe is a bonus. I don't know what that is when you get all the clan symbols, but we'll try it out. This is going to be really good for us. 10% food production bonus. Uh, we're getting attacked by a random wolfie. The Draugr will show up here at this flashing symbol. That's what that means. They're going to arrive, or your event is going to take place here. We also have winter to think about, so we do need to get our food situation squared away sooner rather than later. I don't have any spare... Uh, I don't have any spare villagers, but I do have a lot of wood production. So, I'm going to grab someone from the wood cutter job. And I'm going to actually send them over to a house, or the, the town hall first, to change them into a villager. Now I'm going to send them into this tile so they can build the food silo, and then... I'm going to upgrade the fields. I can do that now, honestly. That's fine. Then that'll be ready for another... This this person, when he's done building the food silo, I'll assign him to the fields shop. By the way, when people are injured, they do produce less. Oh, that's why we have such crappy food production. All of our people are wounded who are working on that. All right, let's focus on healing up our farmers for a bit. Do we have a spare citizen? That's, the, that's him. That's the one we were just working with. Uh, we're at 189 in terms of fame. Damn, you're already at 250? Well, shoot. We got four wounded clansmen. There we go. So now we've got a 10% food bonus. We'll assign him over to the fields. We can also assign the... Uh, or put a field or a silo over here, which is what we'll do at some point here relatively soon. Nice. I think this is equivalent of 20% at this point, right? So by default, it increases by 10 but because of the lore, uh, food silos gain a 10% food production bonus, and you get one happiness per silo. That's what's going to really help us long term. Let's drop a silo down here. You want them to be relatively close to... I, you know what? Maybe the animation doesn't really matter. I've watched them, like, drag food halfway across the tile, but it might actually just be kind of a, a surface level animation, and the flat calculation is based on who's working at which, which resource. So... Uh, we also need to come down to this tile at some point soon, but we need to build up enough food for winter, which we're a little bit close on. So, hopefully we'll be able to stock up a tiny bit before winter hits. Uh, we're also maxed on population. Or, sorry, the, uh, the housing. I could upgrade a house here pretty soon, as soon as I get five more stone. See, everything starts to kind of wind together, right? So, we can't expand, because we need... Uh, well, I could just build another house, but like if I want to upgrade this house, well, I need stone. Well, this ran out of stone, so we'd have to expand over here. We can't expand over here until we have 80 food, but we can't have we can't waste all that food because we're about to hit winter and our production's kind of cut. So you can see everything kind of ties together a bit. Uh, we do have this silo that needs to get built relatively soon. Maybe we can get a villager soonish. Oh, that's right. I literally was just looking at the thing that mentioned that we're out of housing. Let's go ahead and drop down a house here. And I'm going to temporarily steal... You know what? I'm going to steal one of my workers or my warriors. Send them back. Now, I do lose the gold from that, I think. Let's see. We're at 143 gold. Yeah, we didn't get anything back. Oh, well. Nope, don't do that. Uh, you're going to come over here and build this house. Then we'll have them go over here and build this silo. This looks really bad, but I think we're going to be able to hold this through the winter. That that should be okay. Fisky is like, who is this? Man, you're killing it. Holy cow. 
That's brutal. We're gonna have to probably fight them pretty soon. I can, of course, keep expanding, and I do plan to keep expanding probably all the way over here. Uh, expansion is a big part of this type of victory, the fame victory. But I'm just biding my time and being patient. Man, we really need to work on healing some people. Get this farmer healed. Get this man a band-aid. Okay, cool. Where's our villager at? Uh, you disappear. There you are. Okay, go to this tile, fix that up. There's our house, so we're gonna be able to get more people again. We're at two happiness. At some point, I do want to drop down a Hall of Scalds. We have another lore. Uh, advanced silo increases food production by plus two if for each food silo. Oh, nice. So it just gives us a flat bonus. Well, that's awesome. Uh, then, yeah, we'll do that. Boy, this is a really uh, great, great path for food production. When we hit the title of Thane, we just get flat out 150 food, wood, crowns, and stone. Super useful. I'm actually going to use some of that money to go ahead and colonize this this uh, tile, which we've cleared out. Uh, we could try to push into either of these. Now, the swamp is kind of meh. It uh, makes it harder to build, I think. We're, I might just stick a bunch of houses in here, or a, a tower. I believe our one warrior could probably fight both of these. We'll, we'll experiment a bit. You can always pull them back, and your enemy... Oh, there's three. Let's not do that, shall we? Uh, your enemy won't pursue you over the line unless it's the AI sometimes. They don't always do that. It's just kind of like if it's if it's, when it's something they feel like doing, they'll do. All right, we've got two civilians now. Let's put this villager on... You know what? Let's go... Let's go to healing duty temporarily until everyone's healed up perfectly, okay? We're at three happiness, which is really, really high, although I still want to drop down the Hall of Scalds at some point soon. Let's, in fact, drop the Hall of Scalds down. I wonder how much wood I've got. Let's put a couple of houses here, because I'm going to destroy the old houses to make room for um, other buildings. So there's a house here, there's a house here. And we've survived to a new year. Great. Uh, we are pretty low on military experience. You only get military experience from combat, but early game, I generally don't get into too much fighting. I, you know, you could work, you know, you could work at, oh, it's the stupid Kaija. That's going to be a pain in the butt. Um, we could work at trying to get this, uh, fight the green folks, the uh, Fisky here, but honestly, I'm probably not going to make that a priority yet. I'm just going to see if I can't do this land rush. I do need to get this before they do. So that is something to keep in mind. All right, I always forget to put a builder in the tile over. So we've got a, a villager going to build the two houses in the Hall of Scalds. We've got our long ships. I could upgrade this to get a bonus production in crowns. But what I actually want to do is start getting some crowns, flat crowns production. So I'm going to look for a marketplace. Now the marketplace and the trading post. They're two similar buildings. A trading post will give you a flat crowns bonus. The marketplace is where you can spend your hard-earned crowns to buy resources that you have. Uh, you'll buy them with crowns. So eventually you might run out of stones and you have to buy it from the marketplace. So that's something to keep in mind. They both can complement each other though in terms of upgrades. And honestly, now this says two out of three. However, I can eventually develop this area one level higher. Should I be able to do that right away? Oh, maybe I can't do that. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, both of our healers have nothing to do, so I'm going to pull one healer away and turn them into a woodcutter. I will keep one healer here in case anyone gets sick. It helps us stay on top of, uh, you know, keeping everyone healthy. Let's drop down... A trading post where, though? Uh, this is a geyser. It gives one happiness and negative 10 wood consumption. So the entire place by itself gives one one, one happiness. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, how many enemies are here? We have two wolves. Was that it? Let's go ahead and grab... Uh, you know what? In fact, let's actually put down the one that I want, which is a shield bearer's camp. We'll put that over here. You go work on that, and maybe, you know what, I've got one open slot in this section if I were to destroy the house, which I can do now because we've replaced it. I also think I'm going to destroy the training camp. Now, you can get a war chief here, but the war chief is, is kind of expensive. 
Uh, it's not terrible. And in fact, we're going to be able to get that as soon as we move over here to the iron deposit tile. But for the moment, I'm going to kill the trading camp. I'm going to put down a trading post. And we're going to put down the marketplace. Cool, so we've got two houses here and we've got our Hall of Skulls. And also we've got a shipwreck I've not touched. Let's make this person a scout real quick. 